There is a mystical place on Earth where time has no bearing. Where nature and faith have merged to transform an entire kingdom into an earthly Shangri-La. The place is a living Eden called Bhutan. Ensconced between Tibet and India lies a tiny Buddhist kingdom, a jewel in the crown of the Himalayas known as Bhutan. Its people call it Drukyul, the land of the Thunder Dragon. It is believed that protective gods and vengeful demons make their homes in towering virgin peaks which reach 7,500 meters into the sky. of glacial ice give way to alpine forests. Mountain streams cut through gorges on their way to the warmer valleys and marshes in the heart of the kingdom. Here, like ancient hanging gardens, one landscape drops into the next before transforming once again and finally descending to the untamed jungles and sun-kissed grasslands of the southern plains. Arctic cold and tropical heat almost collide within a distance of just 160 kilometers. Its richness and diversity combine with the teachings of ancient religious philosophy to make Bhutan unique. Buddhism reached Bhutan by the 9th century and its legacy has imbued itself throughout the kingdom, not only as a religion, but as a way of life. It has cultivated a widespread appreciation for the beauty of the natural world in every size, shape and color. sense of purpose in the world is probably best illustrated by the Buddhist allegory of the four harmonious friends. Every Bhutanese man, woman and child knows it by heart. Once upon a time, there was a strange bird from a distant land that had been flying for days with a seed in his beak. After such a long journey, he dropped the seed, too exhausted to eat it. A hare dug out a hole for the seed, and a monkey planted it. An elephant then stood over the young seedling, watering it and protecting it from the midday sun. Over time, the tiny shoot grew into a mighty tree, a tree of life with plenty of fruit. It's an idea of harmony that resonates across a land where myth and legend cannot be separated from the landscape itself. The 
search for paradise on Earth, for a real living Eden, has long been the stuff of legends. When 17th century missionaries returned from the East, they told fascinating tales of a mythic Eden, a place of enlightenment, peace, and a carefree existence hidden deep within the Himalayas. They called this magical Eden Shangri-La. Buddhists have another name for this place of peace. They call it Shambhala. They believe that such a state exists somewhere in the Himalayas, but only those who achieve enlightenment will find it. During the summer months, blue sheep called Baurul graze on the steep slopes to the north of the kingdom. As a living Eden, the Bhutanese people strive to live in harmony with the elements and the wildlife which surrounds them. Yaks, belonging to nomadic herdsmen, fatten up on the lush summer pastures. Most of Bhutan's population still work as farmers or herdsmen, so their intimate connection to the ever-changing seasons remains steadfast. <coughs> Herds of up to 200 barul spread fearlessly across the alpine slopes. In Bhutan, hunting is strictly forbidden by both law and religion. The Barul have few natural predators to fear, but one does pose a threat. Because of scarceness of food and the harshness of these high altitude slopes, it is rarely seen. Even so, in order to survive, it must eat 20 or 30 barul annually. The elusive snow leopard passes from myth into reality as easily as it crosses the shifting snow line where it lives. Distinctive markings and spectacular long tail are unmistakable, but its eerie, almost human mating call has been mistaken for the cry of another legendary inhabitant of these mountains, the Mige, the abominable snowman. Sacred shrines dot this rugged landscape as constant reminders of another realm beyond the present world. Even in the most remote corners of Bhutan, evidence of the Buddhist faith is ever present. In isolated monasteries, in places of pilgrimage and prayer, and in shrines dedicated to the sanctity of all life. In Bhutan, the raven is the incarnation of the protective deity Yeshi Gonpo, and to hurt or kill a raven is a serious crime. Linked to the royal family through the raven crown worn by the first Bhutanese kings, it is not surprising that the monastery walls are common nesting sites for this most sacred and revered of birds. The Buddhist reverence for life extends beyond individual creatures to the natural elements. Fire, 